Shout out to kids to cut you on. You care how you're the teeny young. Yeah. One day I, uh, how to shake it. She cut a ya. Which in your cut it at a dart away. You two car you two. Yeah, way, ya, you dead heart to us a good gosh. Yik the two at the woozy cuckoo. A dart away, ye jagger to me. Ya, gone, woochin ye jet to me, ye, ya yees. One conins, conachoe, yan a shit away, ha yago, yan a shit. A car away, a dart you took to ten. Gosh had to us a good cast again, a hawe, yan a cock ha yago. What were two satin? I asked. Shah, Dasa, Dachta Seku at Hatuasuku has to data ya, which in your adaptive art. Ya, what had the woos at you womb? A data way, ya hae jene. A joy ya, you did cut the gain a he quoti yahana. Gao yahoa, we dacha do shoe. A dacha quakur, ya ach yeti. Kandika Kwakur Ya Nate Nate Yan Kasa Kurut Kunichi show a yak a teeth to cut you on. I thought we'd do things a little different today. Uh, we talked quite a bit before we started recording. Uh, you could check the notes or stuff in the notes. We had fun. Uh, but I think it's good every now and then to just sort of just do a little check in. I feel like Hayaku Kwan Kanin. Well, what do I say? Yanashit Hayaku. You guys know that? Yanashit Hayaku. Slippery? There's a related verb from that same root, which means to slide. But that's not how people slide. That's really animals who like slide really fast and it's part of their movement, especially like a kushta. Yeah. Sit. Sit. Yeah, like, <laughs> like if you're in a canoe and everybody's paddling, sometimes you can really get that canoe to just glide oh, across yeah. the water. And that's called yana shit. Yana shit the way So sometimes when I think about our work together here, I think, man, our canoe is really cruising. But then I think, well, maybe we got to go slow for a second and just say, does anybody have questions? We, we go over a lot of stuff, right? And then we. We have plans, we have ambitions, uh, but I want to talk as well about the the Yikdutu the Wuzhuku, the the Yikdutu papers, uh, because I'm getting some really great questions, and I want to go through these questions because maybe you folks have similar questions. So uh, Yikdutu, do you want to ask us the questions that you were you had sent to me, and we could sort of go through them one by one? I thought those, they were. Ah. Uh, uh. Put me on the spot. <laughs> For ha -e, I live in Canada. <laughs> oh my gosh. Ha -e, ha -e is the car crossway. Go <laughs> -e. -e. east. Yeah. Have to make up a treaty seven way. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, that was really early this morning, but if I remember right, uh, I asked about postpositionals because I think I remember you saying we would go over them this year sometime. I, I'm not sure what to do about the suffix on postpositionals. I haven't sorted that out yet. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Also, let's, let's okay, go are, are we going? We'll go one at a time. Because one at a time, all of it tonight. <laughs> well, we'll see. We'll see. Okay, those, those were really those were good. Um, okay, so let's see. Where am I going to find this thing? So we're going to talk for a second uh, about the empty base. Okay, uh, and let me see where I want to. I think I don't know. I, I'm sure I have some slides that talk about this, but maybe not. So we'll just go to house and Ayurvedangi. Uh, so there's a bunch of verbs that have this e day or eat or in right in front of it, right? 
and like you say, ach in didishi, ach in kananik, i in kakwashlamik, kun kakwashlamik, right? So you have this in, it, ide, ich, ye awe ha i wudutli tu. So all of those things have what's called the empty base. And the reason it's called that is because it doesn't do anything except allow you to put a suffix onto a pronoun. You cannot put a suffix onto, uh, so like in English you would say towards me, right? To me, from, you know, and so like there's a bunch of things that you can just sort of do because it's not a suffix. It's like a separate word and it's also kind of an object pronoun. So the way that Tlingit deals with one is like post positions when it comes to directions. Like so you say, in English you'd say on me. Right, so it's raining on me. <clears throat> In Tlingit, how would you say it's raining on me? Me. Back to our notes. Hold on, let me find our notes. Where'd it go? Eat. See you, Dakwusitan. Well, we have see you, Dakwusitan. I think I heard ach. There's one word right here that I'm looking for. In? Not, well, ach in would be it's raining with me. Eat. Eat would be rain has kind of arrived to me somehow. So <laughs> it's not quite what we're looking for. We're close, though. So. That part is right. <laughs> A cut. Say it again. A cut. A cut. Right. So a cut. See you, This is. It's raining on me. Ach. And is, this could also be ka. Right. You could say it either way. You could say haka kewa ah. The daylight has broken on us. You could say haka ye undergun. The sun is shining on us. And so, but what's really interesting here is the on us part is you're really saying my on at, right? Like if you really look at how the language is working. And not to say we're going to translate it that way, but we want to train our brains to think and think it. And I think to do that, we have to do things like this. Ach cut, right? Uh, which gets really interesting because you could say things like this. Ach cut is... What am I saying there? Or got? Yes. I forgot. Yeah. You forgot. Yeah. What did you forget? You forgot. You forgot me. Oh. Ach, cut. Right. So th this and so, what we deal with when we have the e. A lot of times when you have the e sitting in front of a verb, whether it's in, eat, ich, day, is we have an indirect object. So Tlingit does use an object, right? We've learned all these object pronouns. Chat, ha, i, yi, uh, has, at, right? Ash, uh, the sh, right? Those are all object pronouns, straight object pronouns. And it's usually like doing the verb to that thing. But you can have indirect ones as well, where you did something with something to, you know, um, you told it to me, right? Like, that's a good example. Ach, in, ki, unique. You told it to me. Would this also include, like, say, um, you gave it to me? No, because then you'd have jeet. Right? So then, but it's a similar concept, though. Okay. Right. right? So instead, you have, like, a location instead. Ach, cheat, yeti. Put it in my possession. Mm -hmm. It's not my hand, it's possession, right? But it's a similar concept, right? So you could put a suffix on. You could say, ji de, ji nach, jeet, ji dach. You could do all of those things. But you can't say, ach de, ach nach, ach. You can't say those. So the empty base exists, so you could put suffixes on there. So when you see e, 
there's a list of suffixes, right? Oh, I think I know where I had this. Hold on. Found another bird. No. I know I took a Someone's trying to dog. <clears throat> she said you can't do that. And were you going to explain why you can't do that? Or were you going to go into why you can? Or is it just just the way it is? Well, it's <clears throat> just it's a lot like my <laughs> my from my friends. It just doesn't make sense. But the way that think it constructs those things, you do say my on, right? My on at. You say my around, but you can't say you just cannot put a suffix. Like achde, you can't do that. And ide, it just, there's something where I think it just needs an extra thing. I think what it really needs, it says, you need a sound so you can hear that there's a suffix there. So th there is a, a pattern here, um, and I'll tell you what the pattern is. So the pattern in Tlingit, uh I think Tlingit's favorite vowel is the letter A. If you just study Tlingit, you'll see like the letter A pops up when you sort of want a vowel in a, in a certain spot. It just pops up a lot. Right? But if you need a vowel to fill a space, it's going to be the letter I. I'll, I'll show you an example. Here's an example. Um, now, this is, a, this is an advanced verb. So there is, the verb root is right here. So the verb root is also a noun. And uh, does anybody know what k'aq is as a noun? Forget. Uh, no, it's, uh, there's a place called k'aq hit. There's a place called k'aq. There's a thing called k'aq k'ayi nachin. Is that valley? It's not a valley. That's k'ak. It doesn't have this rounded end. Teach ka got ka chug. Press with the k'ak. Fresh water sockeye. Ah. Na ki de hasu k'ak. So the verb here is with the k'ak. That means to for a fish to change its color when it enters the fresh water. And there's three of them that do that, right? Do we know those three? Three that I know of anyways. Maybe you guys know more. When it enters fresh water? Mm -hmm. Got ka truk ka I teach. Got chuk teach. Those are your three salmon that change colors when they hit the fish water. The sakai is the one that a lot of names come from. So takhtein tan have kaak hit, chukach adi have kaak ka, and these things are sacred to us. But there's a verb. So wudzakhaq means the fish changed its color. But we were talking about this in intermediate klingit. This is a rule for, for verb prefixes. For verb prefixes, if you have a consonant, you must have a vowel. So when you put it into this mode, technically what happens is the verb goes back to its natural state. So when it's not plus I, it's just the letter S, right? But you cannot have, you cannot say this as a verb. You cannot say that. Tlingit will not allow that to happen. It says just a consonant in the prefix, technical vowel. No. You are awarded a vowel, and that vowel will be the letter I. It doesn't mean anything. It's just there. It's called a peg vowel. We see this in other places, right? Uh, so a lot of times you'll see this, like here's te. If you add the letter, if you add this, <clears throat> giving you the, every question has a very long answer if i pluralize te do we remember what happens turns to i it doesn't turn to an i it goes long, long, goes long and low long and low so now we get k 
Okay. Now we have rocks. If I want to have little rocks, pebbles, what's it going to sound like? That would be another muscle. X pinch. Okay, we will have take e. One more word. Sani. Sani. This letter I doesn't mean anything. It gets us to the next sound. So if you need a vowel, it's going to be an I vowel. And in the case of the empty base, it's just going to be long. This is what it looks like. Because you could say, ye, owe, ha, e, dutle, tu. This is how we were taught. We were taught about empty bases and peg vowels, right? And so the, the tricky part with this thing, though, is it's high for eat, it's low for een, it's low for e day. Oops. And it's high for E. Oops, not that high. So those are just things that you have to remember. There are some, there's a lot of verbs. If the verb is eat, in the future it's probably going to be E day. E day, kakwadishi. I'm going to help you. That's what the empty base is. So we call it, we call it a postpositional because um, it's gonna, there's going to be a pronoun there. You gotta say ah eat, do eat, has to eat, ha eat, ye eat, ka eat. But what you're gonna get in front of it is a relational pronoun every time. Yeah. Oh. I said it. I thought oh, you, you just peg Val and me? I thought you were. Confirm. Ye away, ha e, do he to that. Sorry. Oh, Dude, too. is that E in the middle? Is that the empty base? Yes. Okay. Just right. so you you could also say, how do you say thank you for teaching me about the empty base? And there should be, okay. So the way the suffixes work, day is towards. Letter T is at, and like it has arrived there. N is with. Yes. Ha eat. Thank you for teaching it to me. I'm like I said the it the first time. These are. Possessive pronouns, right? They are. In this case, yeah. they always are. For this use. Yes, the empty base will always have possessive, possessive. pronouns, which I think okay. I'm going to call relational pronouns. Okay. We're just looking for the ver the verb here. Gunas chish ha eat. Ha tu. The tu is going to be in there. But I'm, I'm trying to say, you taught, thank you for teaching it to us. Us too. Us, us too. You taught it. Oh, you. I have yeah, because it happened. You would, you, so you would have, you would have ha it yeshe too. You taught it to us. But if we want to say, guna chish. There's two things that have to change here. Yishatuwu. Yeah, wah. Wasayakuyidzige gnchish. That is the empty base. And we also, we call it a postpositional pronoun. Uh, it, it really pops up mostly in the pre-verb. <laughs> Specific verbs that want to have like telling it to, uh, helping that you've learned this already with you know, so here's ah eat I could throw Yan uwaha in front of it I'm hungry, right? It's it's right there uh, 
in the in the first example, why didn't why didn't the empty base have a suffix ha e? I don't really know because oh. you could say ye awa ha it wududli too, but I think it has to do with like the fluency of the speaker and just getting into a flow. That's how I heard Cyril George say it. It's ye awa ha e wududli too. This is how we were taught. Okay. But there's not. I don't think there's anything wrong with ye away ha. But if so, here's the thing, right? So if we close it now, this affects what has just contracted. So that must now uncontract to that form. And all it has to do is like if there's a vowel before the verb, then it's just going to push that contraction to start going. Questions. Okay. What was the second question? That W takes a vowel because now there's a now the T is between the E and the E two. Wait, was what's the difference between ye we ha e would would do it to and would do it to would do it to yeah we ha you do it to yeah we ha it would do it to two ways to say the same thing ah oh. my suspicion though is the e part is probably because it has well i don't know i don't know it's a good question Maybe because it's multiple things that were repeat talk. possibly that because he was a fluent speaker, he maybe he removed the suffix because almost from context you could understand and you wouldn't need the suffix if you were a fluent speaker and, and understood through context what he was trying to say, maybe. And that and it's just easier for him to say you you do the two than eat who do the two. Yeah. That's probably it gets like he can say the same thing and it gets you there a little faster. So proper. Okay, there was another there were more questions. Sir. You had good questions. Okay, I have a question. Oh. Um cheese sa. Um ah. How thankful we are that you teach us. Uh, how th mm. I th I would say that means so when you say gonna chish and I use it in a sentence, it seems like I am thankful. That's how I usually interpret that. But if you were trying to say maybe what if there's a plural here, a plural we wa gonna chish sa ha tu ye ti ha yi tu. So I would probably, I would suspect that it would want to be a verb because you can't really conjugate gunchish, even though it probably originally comes from a verb. Wa gunchisaha tu ye yeti. We feel so thankful. We've, we've, how thankful we feel that you have taught us. Now, I'm not encouraging my students to say these phrases about how thankful they are. Just for the record, people are going to watch this be like, gee, he just makes them thank him all for like 90 minutes? Gee whiz. Yeah. Well, I got that out of Hatu Nagayas somewhere. Mm. It was about the Hikchi Hit uh, Steps Being Broken story. Oh, wow. How thankful we were. Um, and they keep going. 
Yeah. I can't find it right now. Uh, I think I'm close. So, yeah, like in terms, and so, like just continue to think about, well, how do we find stuff when we dive back into these resources? So, like at once I heard uh, Shana Kate say steps, like that's what I look for. As so I said, oh, I look for steps because that word might not, I don't think it's in there that much. And then that gets us to how bad we felt when the frog house broke. Uh, and then we could, this might be the one. Yeah, that's the one you keep going up, I think. So then we get to. There's ha tlachwasa, same thing. Yeah, how proud we were. Uh, we were happy in many ways. Huh. That's how proud we were. Um, we felt very proud. That I want to find that one. That was it's a very cool construction. Huh. Okay, I'll find it. Cheesh. So, Hune, can I ask a follow up question? Huh. Uh, uh, with postpositionals, so you have a, a, a relational pronoun and a relational base with maybe a suffix, maybe not. Um, do we call that grouping of words anything? Is there a name for it? Like, um, and, and, and also does placement matter if there's an object noun, does it need to be near that uh, or can it go anywhere? I think I've seen these pop up after a verb phrase sometimes, but they're often before. Yeah. I would expect them to come right before the verb. Uh, and I would probably call them an indirect object because that's usually what's going on. Right. So like teach. So like that example, uh, you taught it to me. So in that case, there is an it in there. So that's where you say uh, eat to me, you taught it, right? And so the object is the thing that has been taught. So in this case, it would be right? Uh, but it could be you taught me how to sew. So you could name the thing after it, like outside, but like the case seems to me more flexible like i don't know it sounds incorrect to me to say i don't think that would fly i, I could check it but it every time it seems like every time it's coming right before the verb so it does like to exist right in that pre-verb spot so that it makes sense and, and here comes the verb with the object in there And so, so like another example coming back um, to telling, right? So when we go to telling, uh, we and sometimes we'll see this, like N in, and then you have plus, and then you should have object K, subject zero, and then meek, right? So this is to tell information uh, to to N. So the end part is, it's in parentheses because it's an optional thing. So then if you say, uh, they told it to me. And so there is an it there. And the it is the information. They told me the news. They told me the, about the, the ock rock. They told me about the coffee time, right? So then you could name what the thing is, right? And so you could say, um, the thing so you can have another noun out here and you can have dot right so that's the thing that was told about right so for example they told me about coffee time right whatever the thing is it could be there but you can change this so if i said now that the tent the tone of the whole conversation has just changed so if this one is, um, uh, they told me about now, uh, what is this one? 
they told me about you. They told me about you. <laughs> <laughs> now I would say, it, or go about you, because now it's got to go. Oh. Well, they told me about you. And then now I'm um, kind of got the eyes of suspicion. Because, the, and there's a bunch of things, like where in Tlingit, where if you say those things, it's just, there's usually an implied meaning in there, right? Like for example, um, here's a, a similar example in, in English with Hawaiian cultures. I was told, if you ask people a bunch of questions in Hawaiian, like, and you're just trying to be friendly, oh, where are you from? Where'd you, where'd you graduate high school? What do you do? Oh, who's, who's your family? If you just kind of keep going, they'll look at you and they'll say, you're asking questions. And, you know, but that's communicating something, right? Like, what does that communicate? You're being nosy. Yeah, stop it. Stop asking me questions. Stop being nosy. Right, so, Achina Kawanik has, I think it has an implied meaning there, which is, yeah, they told me about you, which is, bum, 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 right? So, cute. When I retire, I'm going to write Tlingit soap operas, and this will, this will be one of the lines, and then you all will be like, ah, I did it. But the other thing with the in in Kawanik is it does not change in the future. A lot of them do, like I, I expect them to. So you could say, uh, so if you say, ah, eat, um, yan, uwaha, how do we translate that one? I'm hungry. I'm hungry. So how would I say I will be hungry? Say it again. E day. Mm hmm. E day. Need the verb. Hello, what are Okay. Kaha. I'm be hungry. Again, like, oh, go ahead. Uh, Sorry, yeah, if, okay, for translating this, could we get a little crazy and use uh, like bad syntax for English, but more correct for Clinket? And is, isn't the verb here kind of impersonal? Like, shouldn't it be to me, hunger will come or something like that? Okay. That's, we went crazy. That's how you'd say it. <laughs> Uh, so, like, are you looking for something like my, um, well, okay, so there's a couple ways. Because akide is more of a direction, My receiving words. the action, an indirect object, mm -hmm. but I like to think of it as a relational pronoun that makes more sense in this case. Right, I, I guess we could say will appear. That might be. Will come to me. Will come to me. That's the way I think. Is there an it implied here? Uh, well, I don't know. Or is hunger actually part of the verb? Sorry. Hung yeah, hunger, in this case, hunger is a thematic prefix. Okay. And so that's why we started writing it with that period on that. Oh. Oh. Because it is technically part of the verb. But that's yawn is yeah. the hunger. Yeah. Okay. That's how you say hunger. Yawn. Okay. So that's why right. there's a uh, this is a name. Yawn. Ah. What is that? Ah. Cry cry. Cry. My hunger G eat. Hunger. Is that hand? So we're going to go look for Jayit. Let's see if we can find it. Under the burden of it, suffering from it. Oh, I think it's so dramatic. Starving. So, okay. 
<laughs> so, uh, you know, you could basically say crying from hunger. But again, like, this is what's so fun about learning Tlingit is you get access to the, the insider information, right? Which is cries from the labor of hunger or from the burden of hunger. Can you just say that again about period after a thematic prefix? Yeah. And so the reason, I think, is primarily because you have yan u waha. And we want people to be able to see that it's not yanuwaha, yan u waha, right? It's, so there, there, you do hear it, achit yan u waha. There's a little tiny pause there. Okay. So that's why we're writing that. For all, not for all thematic prefixes. It's no, just... no, it's like, it's a it, but it's such a common phrase oh, sure. that we figured we wanted it to be there. Yeah. Okay. I, I had a question about the um, eat and the ide. Is is it because it's coming towards you? Does that make it like the idea of the it hasn't arrived yet because it's the future? Exactly. Hunger has arrived. Hunger will arrive. And that means for Shlinget, you've got to signal that in two ways. To say, well, then it's going to be day because it's not there yet. And it's going to be a future verb because it's not there yet. So it, it just does it on both sides of it. Yep. I tried my hand at translating did they tell you about me? Mm -hmm. Can I read it and yeah. see if we got it? <coughs> okay, so I tried it and I put Ach inge has the kawanik. Is that close? Is that in the ballpark? The zip code? This is Did they tell me about it? Did they tell it to me? That's what it is. Did they tell it to me? Gee. So. What you are looking for is, did they tell you about me, right? And the, the about part is kind of just built in there, right? I don't know how to do that in English. So this is the part where it's being told to someone, right? Because the in is with. In is always with. Come with me. Will be okay if I come with you, if I walk with you? So that's the part that needs it. So the first part is how would we say with you? In. Okay. Also, is fine. Now this verb has to change. If we're being the one talked about by the gossipers, then we have to be the object pronoun, the true object pronoun. Okay, so did I tell you? Did I tell it to you? And this is good. Write that down. You should say, did I tell it to you? And so this this is a good sentence for the absent-minded professor. I will probably say, oh, did I? But the hus doesn't make sense. Okay, this would be, did I tell uh, did I tell you about them? I gotta, I gotta like contract these because the about thing is the dot part. It's not in there. So this is me telling on them. I was like, ooh, them, them guys, they, they bad. So this, this does lean towards gossiping and also just being a bad character. So, did I tell it about? Did I tell you about it? In, in yes. Awesome. Okay. Let's now let's do that variation. In Did I tell did I tell it to you? That's how I would now take care of that. This is all subtle variations, right? This is all this does this is a lot. So we learn that we can make these little tweaks and we're making these big changes. Did they tell you about me? Inga has a 
because this is plural now. So this is the gossipers. If there's just one, we don't need the hus. I'll just say that. Cut. Ding, ding, ding. We just got one more thing to write. Did they all tell you about me? If you say, you say yes, I'm gonna, we got to go get them now. Okay, I'm just kidding. We're not getting anybody. Okay, okay. And it would be for singular, it would just be without the hus. Correct? Yes, yes. So then the final variation would be exactly the same. Strike the hus. Um, oops. And in this case, did a singular they mm -hmm. tell you about me? Now I've got it narrowed down. I'm trying, to, trying to weed out the gossiper too. Okay, I have a question. Um, you know how with the very many different kinds of the verb nik, and some of them are defraud or talk about and uh, gossip. Why did you pick this form of the verb to put it in in front of? Yeah, because this it's very common to say to give information, right? To say in a kawanik. It was told to you. Right. And so like as far as and, and it's a verb I think to sort of be aware of that when you say in a kawanik, that doesn't that's just straight information but it's such it's an interesting verb to me because if you change the object pronoun it does sound like you know we are giving like the scoop right and which is really interesting because we've got betray secret information and like when you put k in front of it now you're tattling right and so when you read the Raven stories, like this, this is usually the one I think that Raven uses. I, I think they're gonna tell on me. So then he pinches their tongue out or twists it off. Depends on which, and he throws it in the water. But that's why that, you know, it's important to know. That's why the petrol can't talk. And that's why the, why the what's the other one? Yuk. Cormorant, cormorant can't talk. Happened to both of them. So yeah, you do have gossiping, you have disagreeing, you have, um, but now we, we could prophecy, we could foretell the future. And this is an important one, kunach dak, right? Kunach dak. I, I used this one uh, last weekend. Achoe kunach dak yin kak kwanik. I'm going to explain it to you why we do these things in the Qudik. Yeah, but then you do have uh, to call oh, it. So you can put in, you can put in yin or yin or whatever yin, and it doesn't matter which form of the verb you're choosing. Yeah, so you could say, um, so we go down to storytelling. We have shkautlenik. So you could say, a in shkautlenik. I told stories to the people, two people. Is that it? Is that right? Okay. I will translate for you all, to you all, right? And so this this is get this gets really interesting. So here's the translation one, right? We worked on that one the other day. So this can I could say this ach jis has du in there's a lot in there. Let me change something out here. So what am I saying here? Oh, wasn't that uh, translate? The translate. That for your for my benefit. For me. For me. They translated it for me. 
key translated. It's not. Down? This is a command. This is a command model. So you. Yes. What am I? What would this be saying? Translate it for me. Translate it for me. And then there's one more part. To them. To them, to them all. Right. And however you want to do the word order in English, right? But as far as what it looks like in Tlingit, for me, to them, to them all, in translate. So the okay. concept, like we're at Pu'ik, and I, you've been studying Tlingit for a long time, so I call you up on stage. This is what they did to me. Paul Jackson did this to me, others. And that's it. Yeah. And the big beads of sweat come. Yeah. But it's like, it's fun, right? Because this is where you, we did this at Kui. I said, and the Achjiyas in this case is not like a gift for me. It's just saying, I'm not going to do it. You do it for me. I'm just going to do the thing part. You do the, you do that. It, but it's really like, it's good. We did this in Shitka yeah. with uh, Nawaya, right? And this is, it, it brings the people joy because they could see like there's people who could do it. That made me so excited to see that. I did it with my kids last weekend. It was fun. <laughs> it, was a, it was fun for you. It was fun for the, they were they had a blast. They would like talk to each other and then they would run up and except uh, Ava got too excited and she would blurt and she would like yell it out before she got to the microphone. Like, to the microphone. To the microphone. She's just she's having fun. Good stuff. This is really good stuff. Uh, there was one question that I do want to start uh, talking about. So when you look up a verb, uh, in terms of how transitivity works for Shingit, I want us to just sort of think about that. So we can look up any verb here. Uh, it's color coded now. We see, we've talked about this, right? There's a pre-verb there, doc. Uh, in this case is towards the inland, right? Or into the shadows, it has a bunch of different meanings. It's a zero group classifier. The verb root is da. It's a zero conjugation. That's the conjugation type. It is a motion verb. And then you have this. So this last thing, uh, maybe we haven't talked about enough. And this reminds you of the transitivity. The transitivity is given to you in the theme, but I thought it'd be a good idea to include it in parentheses as well. So when you see impersonal, you look back, you say, yeah, there's neither an object or a subject that is impersonal. So impersonal means no object, no subject. Cannot add them. They are not there. If we go over here, we see one that says object intransitive. So the word intransitive on its own for Shinget means there is only one. So when you say object subject is you can have one or two or zero. Right. So in this case, once you see the word intransitive, that means there's only one of them. Then the word before you, before intransitive, tells you which one is there. So this one, I do, I do say this to my children. I say, shish. Well, this is to talk slow. I use this one up here. Shish ilchiyapuk. Don't you be slow, uh, which I don't think is given in here. But this is to talk slow. Um, but so when you see this, there is only an object, not a subject. You cannot take that. You shouldn't take the object out. You shouldn't try to add a subject. So that's what this tells you in the theme. The other one is, um, let's, let's go find a different one. So this one, it says trans. That means there is both an object and a subject. Okay. And that means you can't, you can't remove them. You have to remember that it's there so that when there's a third person, uh, you're going to get the letter A popping up like you see right here. They pointed at it. They could point at me. They pointed at me. Now I'm mad. <laughs> now I have to be like it. Um, and oh, this one, uh, and there are, there are mistakes in here, right? So this is, this one has a mistake. Uh, so 
the software for the dictionary is not working for me right now. I've written them a million emails and I just wrote up the million and first, is that how you say that? Million and one. Email today to say, what is going on? I need to fix my dictionary. There's all kinds of problems with it. So here is a problem. This should say subject in transitive. So if you see something that's not matching up here, if like if it says transitive, be like, well, why is there an S and no O? Because there's an error right there, which is likely to happen. Um, so I have a question. If it's transitive, does it have to have the O? Yes, you can. It, have to have, it has to have S and O? Right, and this is actually a good example. So this is a transitive verb. There's a set of them where you can take the object out, but it pushes the classifier plus D. For example, look at this. It says, they are carving it. Like, there's a thing, there's a spoon, a pole, a screen. But if you wanna say they are carving, what are they doing? Oh, they're carving. And you'll find it up here. And it's um, it's plus D. Cut the top. Now that you're saying, what are they doing? They're carving, right? So there is a set of verbs that you can kick the object out, but it does push it plus D. And that's why you say, Tatke uh, Hwatu. Yesterday I read it. There's some book, magazine, I counted something. Tatke Hwatu. Yesterday I read. It was an activity, it was something I did. But that's how transitivity works. Now, when you get into motion verbs, like for example, we'll go look up he, which is running. Um, so when we go look up the verb for run, oh, it's we're almost there. Okay. You're so close. Okay, here we go. Uh, no. All right. So here's uh, running. So when I list a motion verb in this dictionary, there's a couple things I want you to know. Is one, I just put na preverb. That means there's a set of preverbs that are just by default na conjugation. A, dach, Nach, at, those are all na. Hit de, hit dach, right? And I'm talking about the suffixes. So the suffix, in a lot of cases, will trigger the conjugation to change. That's why motion verbs are funky. Because it just depends. Like, so if you're going pa, if you're going after something, run for the coffee. That is always going to be na conjugation to arrive or something, then it's gonna be zero, right? Nesh, ujahich, they ran inside. That's gonna be zero. So that's one of the things that gets complicated about motion verbs. The other thing is like, so a lot of them are subject and transitive. That's very common for motion verbs. Uh, so in this case, you look down, you say nishich, You'll say, um, oh, don't run, don't run over there. Don't run over there. Um, what is the plural of this verb? Bueno. Which one? Which one? He. Oh. He. You. Five people can't would you he? I guess hot to a goop. So when you go up here and you look up the verb root, which is I think is spread across two pages here. So when we look it up, we say he number two to run. Uh, there's different types of running. Classification singular. The thing that comes after that says plural form goop. So what this lists for you to say, oh, if you want the plural, you gotta go find this other verb root. So we're gonna go find that verb root and we're gonna see something kind of weird. So when we go look for gook, go down or up. 
Oh, we're out of time. I got to get out of here. Okay, yeah, well, I'm almost done. This will be the last thing. And we can talk about this next week, too. And all semester. And all year. It's okay. So here's move by pushing. That's not the one. Here is running. Okay. So what is strange here? Let me just ask you. There's plenty of things. Tell me the strange things. And then we got to go, go pick up my kid. Standing outside in the rain. I'm just kidding. Just <laughs> sitting inside, reading a book. It's all taken care of. It's all okay. So it's object instead of subject in transitive? Yes. This is something that happens regularly, not every time, when motion verbs go plural, for some reason, the object pronoun is the subject. So you can say, we ran around. Okay, whatever. There's also a nose on there. So, okay, whatever. This is when you just surrender to Shinget. You just like fall. Okay, I'll just fall down the hole. Okay. <laughs> Don't fight it. Just give in. It'll be okay. When when you said that when they go plural, they take the object instead. Is that what you Yes. Mean? And okay, so I said I was leaving, but here's one more thing. <laughs> now I will be punished now. Oh my god. Now and now. It's their fault. Check the tape. Check the tape. They kept asking questions. Okay, I'm just kidding. Here's the last one. Widget came, singular jump. Look at this interesting thing. This has even more interesting stuff. Yes, there's an object pronoun. Okay, we get cut. For some reason, horizontal surface jumps on there. And a frozen fourth person pronoun. Ha cow do work in. We all jumped around. We don't know why we're object pronouns. We don't know why there's a fourth person frozen in there. And we're running out the door now. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. This is all like very advanced stuff. These are like the extreme exceptions, but uh, those were very good questions. We'll finish your other. If you folks have questions, always ask them. If you send me an email with a bunch of questions, I'm going to bring them to class. We're going to do them. <laughs> so we found out. Y'all are rad. Y'all done. Hey, son. You just. Y'all done. Y'all done.